Hello, this is Daniel Thomas Andrew Daly. This video presentation is Karaite Adamai Noahide Faith, The Principles of the Rainbow Torah 3. Karaite Adamai Noahide Faith, The Principles of the Rainbow Torah 3. Now, the Rainbow Torah, of course, is the book of Genesis, chapter 1, through to chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. So from Genesis 1 1 to Genesis 11 9. I'm just going to read a, a little bit from chapter 11, actually. The chapter 11 section, chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. The Tower of Babel. Now, the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, otherwise we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the mortals had built. And the Lord said, Look, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse the language, so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Tower of Babel. Now there's, there's principles in there. We know that when mankind unites, if it's, um, if they've united and they're, they're building a project, if the Lord destroys that project and tears it down, it's because there's something not right in what they're attempting to do. There's something not good or decent or holy about what, what, what we're, trying, we're trying to do, what men are trying to do on a project. Now, the, the world is full of cities and towers and skyscrapers and great big monoliths all over the planet now. And the Lord hasn't torn them down, hasn't had them destroyed. So what we can assume by that is that the Lord is in control indeed, that most of these projects which have gotten underway on the world's largest buildings and things like that in this modern era, is that the, the foundational idea or the foundational spirit, the foundational motivation behind the building of so many of our infrastructures, which are huge monoliths, they're not corrupted ideas. They're not ideas which are probably built on what you would say arrogant pride and an arrogation trying to assert I said God in a sense, and to be of the authority of man. Nimrod was responsible for building the Tower of Babel, and we can probably assume that he had an antagonistic spirit somewhat. I mean, Babel, of course, is Babylon, and it's sort of like the worldly sort of system, you know, which opposes God in somewhat in some traditions. So, um, we know that God continues to work in mankind, and that he does oppose things. If it's, if it's not right, it won't, it won't, it won't come to be. It won't last if it's not right. If, a, if a, a system or something is not right, it'll eventually die out because it's opposing the will of the Lord. But um, God's not so much against unity in mankind because he teaches unifying principles. But sometimes in the unification of those things, pride can develop, so he, so he divides it. God divides the pride of man sometimes because pride has come in. And this pride that was going on in the Tower of Babel, most likely pride, was, was arrogant and it wasn't going to be a godly godly Babel tower in the end. It wasn't going to be a nice thing. It would have had the, probably the dictate, dictator Nimrod at the top and cruelly oppressing the people and ruling them as an ultimate dictator. It was probably a dictatorial system. So that's what we, we infer a lot from that, but that's, that's what we can probably assume. There, there was something not right about the Babel spirit. There was something not good about it. There was something not holy about it. Mankind, nothing that they propose to do will be impossible for them. They've got up themselves. They're going hard and going for the glory, but they're not doing it God's way. They're not doing it in a godly and decent way. God doesn't mind society developing and progressing and getting larger. In the covenant of Noah in Genesis 9, he says, replenish the earth. So he's not about not against population and building civilization and structures and cities and developing the world. 
that's not what he's against. He's against things which arrogate themselves, become arrogant and prideful, and build build a tower up to the heavens to conquer the Lord God's own domain. Because it's trying to build a tower up to the heavens to conquer God. So uh, one of the principles of the Rainbow Torah is that when you when you build a project, when you start off an endeavor, make sure it's humble enough and within the framework of what God approves of, otherwise it just won't last. It will be divided and split up and confused and it won't last. Do it God's way and that's essentially one of the principles of, I suppose, a project or, or an initiative or an ambition which the Rainbow Torah teaches. Do it God's way or the Lord will cause it to end.